All right, everybody, welcome back. Atlanta Hawks, <laughs> first game of the Eastern Conference final. Crazy, right? Typical Marriott Wi Fi. It's always slow. You know what? We lost Randy a little bit. We have the wonderful Aurora with us. Aurora, welcome to the show. Thank we're, you. we're happy to have you here because we have a lot of questions for you. So thank you for that. <laughs> let's, uh, let's start with, with the first one here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you run your business? Uh, sure, I will try not to ramble too much. <laughs> Rambling so is basically- good, we love it. Okay, perfect. Um, so basically, I got into real estate uh, starting from the service industry. So I was working at the time as a waitress and had a lot of realtors coming in and other people in in that space, title reps, all that kind of stuff coming in as customers. Um, and basically getting to talk to them, I just realized that real estate was a service industry as well kind of right up my alley, just another way to help people. Um, so I started while I was a waitress, uh, kind of working part-time my first year, started on a team. And uh, after I left waiting tables, teaching yoga, I decided to go full-time. Uh, was just getting too busy to do everything. In my second year, I went full-time, closed 55 deals as a single agent, ended up ranking <laughs> number 81 uh, by Real Trends in the state of Washington. Whoa. And just kind of, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was a lot of work. <laughs> uh, you, hold on. Did my... you do that all by yourself? At like no assistant, no TC, or how did that look as you were you were becoming the, the top agent there or one of the top agents there? Sure. So, so that year when I ranked, I was, uh, I was working on my own. Like I said, first year I did have a team, uh, no assistant or anything like that, but definitely I wouldn't say that I got started just fully on my own. Um, but that second year, yeah, working as a single agent and same thing in my third year, I was working as a single agent, but what I discovered is I had more leads coming in than I could handle working on my own or wanted to work on my own. Um, and so what I started to do was actually hand more deals out to referral agents than I was closing personally, still working a lot on my own, uh, ended up closing 57 deals that year. And just between that and the referrals that I was handing out, ended up ranking 71st that third year again by real trends. Um, so that, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, um, From there, so year four was 2020, everybody's favorite year, right? Kind of complicated the process a bit, but uh, I'm glad I had started that third year handing things out to referral agents because year four is when I really started transitioning to a primarily referral-based model. Um, And that's, that's where I'm at now. So basically the leads come into my Chime site they're worked by that Chime automation and then handed off to agent partners that I've uh, just created relationships with for a referral fee. Do you do you do what Adam Frank does and, and do you use Chime as the place where everything's happening and those referral agents have to jump in there and take a look at them and put in the notes there? Is that what you do? Absolutely. Yeah, I just found that that's the most streamlined kind of efficient way to to keep everybody on the same page and to manage the number of leads that I have coming in. All right. I like that. So before you got there, I want to talk about the systems you had in place to be able to get to where you got to just on year two, like where were the leads coming from? How, how were you, how are you optimizing your time? Because as a single agent to close 50 plus transactions, that's insane. In, in Washington yeah. <laughs> for that price range, right? That's, yeah. that's so can you can you go over the systems you had in place? Like where were the leads coming from? Where were they dumping into? Were you getting to all of them? Were you automation? What did it look like? Tell me. Sure, sure. 
So um, I use and have been using Chime as my CRM. So that's where all the leads are funneling into. Um, as far as lead sources, my first two years as a single agent, I was primarily relying on Zillow leads. Um, I just found that they were kind of the most ready to go. I also worked with Brian Short quite a bit for Google PPC. Never heard of that guy. Never heard of that guy. <laughs> no, yeah, look him up. Look him up. He's all right. Uh, Check him out. So, so yeah, like I said, they all kind of funnel into Chime. And then I, I do, I use actually Adam Frank's automation system to follow up. <laughs> I don't know that guy either. Who are these people? Who are these people? Well, I'm telling you, you got to look them up when we're done with this call. Brett. Um, <laughs> Yo. Who are these people? What? What? Who? Adam Frank and, and Brian Schwartz? Like we've never heard of these people ever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's like the Kentucky Fried Falcons or something. The Kentucky Fried Kentucky Fried Falcons. That's Randy's new restaurant. I will hurt you in person. <laughs> Physical violence. Oh, oh, I love it. All right, all right. so uh, Brian Short, Adam Frank. I love that. So the leads are coming through. The systems are in place, which I think is is the key here. Because so many people yeah. fail without these these processes in place. Now, what did that leave you to do? Because just you coming from the service industry, uh, just that alone, you know how to talk to people, obviously, right? So that's awesome. I do all right. Service, <laughs> you do all right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do amazing with what you're doing. So tell me, what part do you gravitate to the most or, or then at the time that, that said, I love this part of real estate and I don't love this so much what did that look like hmm. okay i'm not totally sure i understand your question so, so i'm like, gonna try uh, to i'm gonna say i actually can answer this one for oh, you perfect um, it's it's funny because i get to see the other and it's it, just so everybody is clear i mean she's literally right there so <laughs> we work a lot together as far as we're, we're always kind of in each other's business. I was away from her business <laughs> as much as I could. Um, but it always kind of bled over a little bit, if you would. Um, I would say your favorite things about real estate is the human connection. Mm. Um, and then your least favorite thing about real estate is the BS and drama that goes with it. I just want to just want to make this really clear. Aurora does not have, a, a Facebook account. She has like no social media at all. So she is like the least social agent you'll meet. Um, but all she does is just, she trades a lot of business and it's all business for her, which is kind of cool to watch. That's awesome. Because a lot of people gravitate to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and any, any place else to get business. So Aurora, since you're using Brian Short, most of the business that you're getting or that you got going to where you are right now, was that Google PPC and Zillow or just Zillow at the beginning, then Google PPC? What did that look like as it grew? Um, a little bit of both, but definitely started out more with Zillow and then learned about Brian Short and uh, started to use him more Um until it was a pretty good mix of both. Now it's actually all organic leads coming in through uh, the Chime site. So mm -hmm. I've kind of shifted away completely from that. Um, but yeah, to, to touch on what Brett said, I think a lot of people do social media really well. And um, I certainly felt really pressured to try <laughs> when I was uh, first getting into real estate. I did once upon a time have a Facebook page, that kind of thing. Um, but I just kind of learned that like he said, the human connection, talking to people, that's really, that's what I enjoy. And that is what has worked for me in my business. Um, I think it's all about being genuine and being honest about what works for you as an agent and not trying to do something just because so many other people are doing it. Um, there are people who are on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube and doing an excellent job. And there are a lot of people who are on all of those social media sites and it's just a lot of noise, right? And I, I, I stepped away because I think I was falling into the ladder. All right. So 
That makes a lot of sense. It's actually some great advice for, for agents that are, that are listening in. So can we talk a little bit about you growing with Zillow and, and then PPC? Because I think when agents are looking in at a successful agent that, that uses online lead generation to grow their business, one thing that's, that's often misunderstood is the amount of money it takes to be able to grow that. And yeah. people think, well, I'll throw, I'll throw $200 at Zillow, a hundred, right. And then, and then maybe 500 to PPC. Uh, can, can we talk a little bit about that? Because I, I want people to understand the amount of money this takes, right? Like, sure. Talk, um, well, however you want about this. Okay. Well, she might I cry. I was going to say. <laughs> I, I'll try to hold back the tears, um, but I think that it's sufficient to say that I don't want to talk about how much money, how <laughs> much money I dumped in. Oh my gosh, especially to Zillow, especially to Zillow, um, because it does. It's just like you said, you can't just spend a little and expect a big return. You have to spend a lot of money, and then you better be willing to pick up the phone consistently because that money will go down the drain uh, just as quick as you put it in. You know. So I, uh, I, go I, ahead. So I have to cut you off. Just like a funny story of, of when Aurora got a Zillow bill one time, um, and she looks at it and she goes, "I could buy a car." for how much this is. <laughs> and it was just kind of one of those like those moments where where she realized how much money she was spending on something. And, and when you think about it, she came from being a waitress to real estate. And that that bill that hit her that first time, it was like, I could buy a car with this. And that was a decent Washington have to, like, as well, right? Right. And it was yeah, thinking about that though, like I was go ahead, Randy. Well, just the Zillow bill in Eastern Washington is probably peanuts compared to what a Malibu Zillow bill would look like. Yeah. Yeah, but the point, I mean, that's true, but the point is that I think people forget that it takes a lot of money to, to really start with online. Like, even if it was just Aurora, even if it was just Google PPC that you would have started with, it still takes quite a bit. And I love that you gravitated to organic right? Because that's yeah. where we all want to get to. And look, I, I do a combo of both. I don't do Zillow anymore, but I do a lot of PPC and we do a lot of organic, right? And that's, that's what I love. Sure. I, I love both. What does it look like today for you? Like, is it still a combo of PPC or no PPC, just organic referrals from your past clients? What does it look like right now? Sure. So right now it's all organic plus referrals from past clients. That has become a huge piece um, in the past two years, two and a half years, um, which again, that's also where we all want to get, right? Those, those repeat clients and referrals from past clients are just a gold mine. All right. That, good. I love that. All right. So tell me, how are you using Chime that if you wish that you could go back to when you kind of started using it, you're like, ah, I wish I would have done that first because it's so much easier now, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, a bit, a big piece of it is just the the automation system that we talked about earlier. Uh, keep name dropping Adam Frank and getting you all uh, riled up. Um, but that automation system, that that's huge. Um, because just having some of that follow-up taken care of and knowing who to contact when um, is a big piece. Other than that, as far as me using Chime, I'm pretty big on just sending property alerts versus a bunch of other emails. I try not to spam people um, with a lot of extra junk. Um, I'm also, I think maybe a little different than some agents because I'm not huge on a really aggressive uh, follow-up plan right when new leads sign up, I would much rather reach out to the person and hopefully get them on the phone and just have kind of an honest conversation about where they're at. Um, I think when you can do that and when you can connect with somebody just with the intention of how can I help this person, what can I give them that's actually relevant to their home search instead of how can I close this deal and how can I close it fast, um, the closing, that, that'll take care of itself uh, and people forget that. 
That's a really good point on that. I, I love that you said that because some people just try to go pressure, pressure, pressure. I, I, I know all of us here talk about that. It's the opposite, right? I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. You'll push people away. Yeah. That's the key. All right. So when it comes to the referrals that you're giving out now, I want to know how that works a little bit more because we all, <laughs> Brett's laughing because yeah. Oh yeah. We have an opportunity too. And I don't, I'm always looking to see, well, what, what else can I change? What can I do better? So tell me how this works. You're, you're getting referrals from Washington, right? Yes. Yep. And, and now you're located somewhere else. You're not working those. You're referring those out to these agents that you've qualified to be able to refer to, or, or how does it work? Give me the details. Uh, that's, I mean, you pretty much summed it up. That's correct. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy that while I was still up in Washington and actively working that I already started uh, developing referral relationships with agents. Uh, because now I'm at a point where I don't have to micromanage. I know how these agents work. I can trust them to do what they need to do. Um, but basically they're set up so that they have access to uh, my chime, but from kind of a non-management end of it. So they just see the leads that come in that have been assigned to them and can use Chime to follow up with them from there. Um, I can go in and check on, uh, you know, they all know to put in notes to kind of keep me up to date with where those leads are in the process. Um, so whenever I need to check in on them, I can do it that way. I mean, Aurora, that's <laughs> awesome. I, I, I don't know why I wouldn't do that. And like, now I'm thinking like, I was talking to Adam, I think like three weeks ago or, or a little longer. And I'm like, dude, sure. we, could, we could do this, what you're doing in like luxury areas. It would pick like yeah. parts of Colorado, Florida, all, all the luxury areas. It makes a lot of sense right. in the higher price points. Right, Brett? Yeah, it was funny. It was when she started when she started doing this. I literally looked at. It, I'm like, why the hell did I think about it? <laughs> <laughs> it would have saved a little gray hair up here if uh, if I had thought of that sooner. <laughs> but, I mean, but that was. I mean, she wanted to be out of Washington. She wanted to be able to do more things with her life, and and she goes, "This is what I'm doing." I'm like, "Have fun with that. Hope it works." And it's worked better than I think either one of us ever expected. All so. Right. I think that's a that's a really smart idea. I'm gonna go back to Aurora on one question. Aurora, how did you decide to to work with the agents that you currently have right now? Like who who are they? Did, did you ask like, did you look for specific characteristics? Did they have to have experience? What were you looking for? Because that's I think one of the biggest challenges most people find when they're creating a team or they're creating this referral partnership. Sure. So um, a couple of different areas, actually. So um, I do have a couple that I had found who were, they already had their licenses, um, but they were newer agents. So they were, you know, new agent, doesn't want to spend a lot of money on marketing, doesn't want to spend a lot of money on generating their own leads. Um, so they're happy to work with you and being a newer agent, uh, not so set in their ways, right? Open to guidance and maybe some input from me on how to make, how to convert, how to close deals. Um, that's a big one. I, I like people, I like newer people. And then actually looking from the service industry as well. So uh, I think, and I'm not the only example of this, there are a lot of great agents who come from the service industry because selling real estate is just customer service. Yeah. So I have taken on, helped people step into the real estate space. And I have another um, referral agent who actually I used to work with as a waitress. Uh, so she used to be one of my coworkers there. And a couple months Actually, I think just right after I got my license, she got hers as well. We never worked um, at the same company even, but just as I started to shift into that referral model, uh, I approached her and she was she was happy to hop on board. And because of her history, I just, I knew she would take excellent care of people and get the job done. All right. Uh, how, how does the referral model work? Like, is it, is it 50-50? Is it 40-60, 30 70. You're going to get me into a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> I mean, I, look, if, if it was me, or I'd be like, well, 
damn Washington. Um, I'm all, I think I would probably shoot for 50, 50 because I'm the one bringing the leads. I have the systems, right? It makes sense. 50, 50. Now I'm running, like you're running a referral partnership team at this point. It's different than just a referral. Um, well, without digging myself into a bit of a hole here, there are some on a 50, 50, and there are some who are not on a 50, 50. So let's, right. let's leave so it at that. <laughs> it's like a, or it's like a team, right? Like, like yeah. if I have, a, I have a few teams and depending on the amount of closings, the amount of experience, right. Yeah. You go down or up. Right. So it makes, yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Like if I can rely on, let's say I can rely on Randy who is handling Malibu all the time. I mean, he's like my go-to. I'm like, of course, I'm going to give him a better split, right? Of course. Sure. So that makes, that makes a lot of sense. So now you're giving, now I'm going to be texting Brett and Adam. I'm like, Hey guys, do you guys want to start like a national thing in luxury areas? <laughs> Laura's idea is pretty good. Loop me, loop me into that group text. <laughs> I mean, I also included Aurora. Did I not include your name somehow? I don't even know what happened. Just, just do it all to her. <laughs> This I'm, is you know all what, her baby. I'm gonna include Adam, Frank, and Aurora, and be like, "You guys want to do something in the luxury area?" Yeah. All right. So I love this. This is great ideas, Randy. I love this, dude. Do you, I'm gonna ask Randy? Randy, do you know anybody else that's doing this um, at, at similar level to Aurora in other parts using Chime, other parts of the U.S.? I mean, we've mentioned. Some of them already on here. Uh, I know, like you said, Adam obviously is doing it. Corey Prince. Cor I, I thought Katie, who we had on a few weeks ago. I oh yeah, Katie does it too. too. Yeah, I think she was setting it up. Maybe um, Aurora. Maybe there's something more to this. What? I think we should just think about this and be like, what? Maybe we're missing something. We could grab a bigger group. And yeah, let's let's sit on this and I'm think. I'm interested. I think there's something deeper here. Randy, think. I'm a, I'm a connector. I'm a con <laughs> I connect people. I'm happy to do it. James Patton says he wants a group text as well. All right, James. Uh, oh, see, bad. there's James Patton as well. I made that connection. There we go. I'm doing you my job. Me, you made me laugh. I spilled my coffee, Randy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, uh, yeah, Aurora, that uh, I know. Aurora, I have a last question for you here because you, you get a lot of agents that come in and they don't succeed in doing Google PPC or even as first or second year agents. And you did it at an amazing level. And what, what's some advice that you can give these agents listening in and saying, hey, look, th this was these or this were probably the things that made me successful. Like what would that be so that people can duplicate it or focus on those things? Sure. Okay. Um, I, I think it all boils down to simplicity. Um, that was really the driving force why I got um, my referral business set up the way it is. And frankly, I think why I had so much success converting leads and getting people to work with me as their agent. Um, I'll say it again. I've said it before. Real estate is just customer service. So if you can focus on just providing world-class customer service, be genuine with people, actually want to help people, make that your first focus, then the rest of it will start to come together. People will work with you. People will refer to you. Um, and then find what works for you. There's a lot of noise. Um, it, it's funny because obviously I'm sitting here giving advice right now, but you will never find a shortage of people in real estate who want to give you their advice on what works. So just learn how to listen without biting on everything that you hear. Uh, really, really analyze who you wanna take your advice from, but then also realize that just because something's working for somebody else doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Um, get a Chime site. Uh, the, the automation that you can have like with that. a Chime site <laughs> yeah, well, but but I mean, genuinely, it's it's just simplified my business so much. It's allowed me to step back and to prioritize to have a process that works smoothly both for myself and my referral agents. Um, I mean, that's that's it. It's watch all the videos you can from guys like you who are talking to people who are making it work. Um, look for good examples, and then just keep your head down and get it done. Get to work. 
I love it. Guys, anything you want to add? I, I loved this conversation. Um, I, you know, let me unmute myself. It's weird because I've got myself picking up on her mic too. Um, I actually have one more question for you because we have like two minutes left in this. So you, you came into this as a new agent and you're still relatively a new agent, but it's hilarious because you've done a lot more business than even experienced agents and you've <laughs> built a team and you've done all kinds of, sorry that I'm like tooting your horn for you right now, but I'm good at that. Um, what is your best advice? for those people that are already in real estate, not just new that are coming in. Cause a lot of people will see this and they'll be like, Oh, she's new. But what's your advice for people that are already in real estate? Okay. Um, a lot of it is just going to tie back into what I would tell somebody who isn't in real estate. Um, but I guess, you know, if it's somebody who's in a position where you're running a team, especially, um, if you're looking to add to your team to hire new agents, look in the service industry, look for waitresses, look for bartenders, uh, waiters as well. Sorry, was that too gender specific? Baristas, honestly. Um, anybody who's handling just a large volume of customers, having to have accuracy, having to keep a smiling face when things get stressful. Um, if people can handle that kind of pressure and still have a good attitude and get things done with accuracy, that's gonna transfer over to real estate. And not only are you gonna take somebody who has those key skills that you can then train on real estate and not have to untrain bad habits, but you also don't have to take an agent who's working somewhere else and try to convince them why your model, why your brokerage, why your team is gonna provide more value than where they're already at. So uh, that would be a big one for, for like a team lead. Um, Let's see, definitely um, as far as when you do get leads coming in, uh, if they're coming from out of state, try to try to get on the other side of their deal as well. If somebody's moving into your area, make sure that you're not stopping the conversation at how you can help them get into their area. Are they selling a property where they're coming from? Try to get a referral on that. Try to get referrals wherever you can. Uh, if you have past clients who reach out and they want you to sell their property because they're moving out of state, same thing. If you can jump in, get ahead of them and find them an agent where they're going, then that's just easy income. And it's that's everything. Uh, the more referral-based income you can get, I'm all for it. It's, it's where you want to go. That's awesome. I want to chime in with one, not chime in. I did it again. Um, I want to chime in with, <laughs> I do it, I do it on, on accident every time. I want to, I want to actually like point out one thing that I've seen Aurora do that I don't even know if she recognizes that she does. Um, when she gets, so she gets a lot of leads coming in all the time. And if she has a bunch of leads that like aren't converting and they're just kind of sitting there in her, in her pipelines, she, she will actually like turn around and hand those off to either newer agents that are in her office or that are in another office. And basically she'll try to get a cut out of those and let newer agents that really don't have a lot of experience follow up with them. Because what's, what's cool about it is she may say, yeah, they're, they're dead or they're dead enough that she doesn't want to work on them. And, and she basically has already cut her loss on those. Like, I mean, yeah, they're mostly organic. At this, in fact, I think they're all organic at this point, but whatever. She's already cut her loss. She's letting someone else have a chance at converting them that is still learning. And who knows? I mean, I've seen her make a couple of bucks uh, if they've converted, but it's a lower split, but it's giving another agent an opportunity. Um, and you could, and I've seen her with at least one of her referral agents get another agent out of that. They've joined her referral network because they see the leads that she's sending over and they're like, wow, she's getting a lot of leads. And she'll turn around and get another agent out of it. She's showing her value before she's asking them to join her team. I mean, it's 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 a pretty brilliant thing. I'm kind of bummed she didn't bring it up because she probably could have done that better than I just did. <laughs> well, Brett, there's going to be a part two to this, so. Oh, I, I hope so. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do great, Aurora. Thank you for being on. And just in case any of us have referrals for you, what areas do you cover? Oh, in case uh, all of all of Washington State. Perfect. For all a second Washington there, State. I if thought you, you were going to say. Need help, I thought you were going to say the whole United else. States. <laughs> I thought you were going to say all of you. Well, I, was, I was about to say. 
I was about to say, I can help you find an agent anywhere. Hey, you need set up with a referral. I got you. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Thanks, Aurora. Thanks for being on. And thanks for having me. Randy, Brett, thanks for co-hosting this, guys. See you guys. Always my pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.